Father would sit down and you tell him the meaning of it. What all them you say to me up and you gotta But yeah. how did you learn the, the the cancellations? By hearing. We sang we sang scores, but listen to the cantor. You know, some kids when they stand at an altar, choir boys, they play with the mm -hmm. with, with their tzitzes. No, no, some listen. For his bar mitzvah in 1917, instead of making the usual speech, the young boy performed the morning service as the cantor. You had to learn the words in the leader, exactly what they meant. You had to, in the cantorial style, know exactly what was being oh, said Oh, you there. better know. Therefore, that too was you, a you training You are called ground. the messenger of the people. You are a shaliach tzibur, you are mm -hmm. the representative. And you know whom you're and talking to. That's right. And he understands Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows, he knows what you're saying. Jan and Alice Pierce, when Edward R. Morrow visited Jan and Alice in their home for his television show, Person to Person, Jan remembered his first public appearance outside the synagogue. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Jan. Good evening, Ed. What's the earliest Jan Pierce performance you can remember? Say, I could take you back a long, long way. How far back do you want me to go? Shall I go as far as my childhood? Right to the beginning. Beginning? Yes. Well, you know, I used to belong on the east side. I used to belong to a wonderful settlement house called, called the... Madison House Settlement. And they used to send us to camp for two weeks. And uh, it was in that camp, Felicia, that I uh, went to year in and year out. And the first year that I was there, I must have been nine or nine and a half years of age, when they had a contest. And believe it or not, uh, I, I won that contest. And uh, I'd like to tell you, he said, I got a wonderful prize. I got a box of candy as my prize. <laughs> and I'd like to sing uh, just a couple of bars of the, uh, of the melody that I... Uh, that I did. This was the winning number, right? Huh? <laughs> yes. Jack o' lantern in the lilac tree dances, perfume from the garden wall and trances. La da 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 We owe you several boxes of chocolate. And let me right. tell you my favorite brand, young man. All right. <laughs> to what degree do you feel that your singing as a cantor, that open style of singing, reflected healthily in your work later on, or did it not? You know, to sing, whether you sing as a cantor, or if you sing opera, is not a great difference. There's a difference in the, in the language. There's a difference... Not even in the emotion, because if you sing of love and you sing to a, towards a, a, a girl and you sing of love towards God. God, there must be the same intensity. Seventy years after his debut at Camp Felicia, Jan Pierce is recording at the Jerusalem Music Center with conductor Mendy Rodan and the Bersheva Chamber Orchestra. He sings Verdi's Questa Oquella from Rigoletto. Mm -hmm. 
At the time, he told the New York Times, I sing as well as, if not better, than I did 25 years ago. There is no relation between good singing and age. The important thing is to have a foundation in vocal art. You learn that you don't waste your principle. You sing off your interest. The critic Louis Biancoli commented, his voice, though it has darkened slightly and gained in richness, sounds as fresh as it did at his debut. Jan Pierce is one of our seven wonders of music. So I began to sing, and then came my mutation period. After 14 and a half, the voice changed. And all of a sudden, at the age of 17 or so, I began to hum. I began to find that tones were being emitted. Pinky Perlmutt did well at DeWitt Clinton High School, but he never took his final exams and did not graduate. He attended courses at Columbia University, but exhibited no desire for higher education. Every degree, every credit, he thought, would lead him further down the road to his mother's vision of her son as Dr. Jacob Pincus Perlmutt. But he had music in his heart, and music in his soul, and a girl named Alice on his mind. Jan asked me to marry him, and I said no. One of the reasons was that he was not doing well at school. Secondly, I was fearful that his mother would put the responsibility upon me or the blame upon me for his not becoming a doctor. And the third reason was that my parents did not want me to marry Jan. They eventually did marry. They eloped after a secret wedding in 1928. I married him, I loved him, and he was the first person, the first boy that ever kissed me. Secondly, he had such charm. He could charm anybody and anyone all his life. Jan played the violin in a combo he founded called Pinky Pearl and His Dance Band. They worked the borscht belt for 14 summers. Alice knew his voice had far greater potential than his violin, but they found the going tough. Whatever money he and Alice had left over, she insisted he spend on voice lessons. I began to sing around, and uh, people began to talk. Tenor, young tenor. Not only in the synagogue, in conjunction with my violin playing, I began to sing with the little orchestras. I worked at the Astor Hotel, where I did some singing. I became the, the chorus singer, you know, for the dance music, and we do little uh, concerts, and I'd sing a little number that I memorized and learned. And at one of the dinners in 1932, there was a big dinner being given in honor of Weber and Fields. Remember them? Uh, they were great comedians, and this was their 50th anniversary. So everybody in show business was there, including a man by the name of Roxy, Samuel Rothfeld. The turning point came in 1932. Samuel Roxy Rothfeld, the famous showman for whom the Roxy Theater was named, heard the young man sing and asked to see him the next day. And I went to see him that Tuesday at the Palace Theater building, and uh, the first question he asked me is, what are you doing with a fiddle in your hand? Why are you playing violin? I said, I have to earn a livelihood. But he said, do you realize you have something in your throat? You have a beautiful voice. I said, uh, well, uh, people have been telling me I have a nice voice, but I can't get anywhere. Jan Pierce was signed to sing on a radio program broadcast from Roxy's newest and largest theater, the Radio City Music Hall. 
but the conductor, Erno Rappé, was unimpressed with the kid from the Catskills. And in front of the orchestra, he said, you'll never make it. What are you doing here? Go back to play your, your weddings and bar mitzvahs and dances. You're a nice boy, but... Well, this was enough to kill me in front of a hundred-piece orchestra. Not until Rappé had heard Jan sing the only opera aria he then knew, La Donna Immobile, from Rigoletto, did the conductor know that Jan had a great voice. And as I was waiting at the door, many of the musicians who didn't know me said, Sorry, kid. Sorry. Each one had a word of sympathy for me. Finally, he came in and he said to Rappé, he said, Look, let him sing something. and Let him sing an aria for you. If he sings an aria, look at that aria. Let him sing La Donna Immobile. I sang it. I sang to be natural. So why don't you tell me? You sing it tomorrow. From that day on, we became friends. <laughs> 